one. Welcome into the first in ten podcast. You're all you know tuned into the first in ten podcast brought to you by OXP Media. I'm your host Brandon Graham, and I'm very excited to have a special guest on today: Toronto Argonauts quarterback Antonio Pipkin, Gary, Indiana native, uh, player of course on the Montreal Alouettes, the Tiffin University uh, as well, in, in D two, and of course right now it was formerly of the Arizona Cardinals as well, but now currently on the Toronto Argonauts. Man, welcome into the show, man. I really appreciate having you on. Yeah, man, appreciate you having me. hundred percent. So I'm going to talk to you about your, your football journey and exactly just your, your entire journey from, you know, from the beginning, especially of, of how you carried it on right now. Because I remember watching, I think everyone's kind of watched, you know, a certain game in 2017 where you, you know, playing on the Montreal Alouettes, you um, know, of course, coming in, of course, behind uh, Johnny Manziel and just showing out. And I, I thought from that moment that you're just different, you're different, different read all together. But just talking about your football journey in general, where did it start? When did the the uh, your the love for football pretty much cultivate yourself? Uh, probably when I was like six, seven years old. Right. Um, growing up in Indiana, you know, you get the, all the coach games on TV. So okay. I had I had Peyton Manning watching growing up. So um, I just liked the way he played. Um, obviously, we played two different ways a little bit with him not re- really being too mobile, but. Uh, that was my first introduction. Him, Edron James, uh, Reggie Wayne, anyway. Marvin Harris, and Jeff Saturday, mm-hmm. Dallas Clark, Bob Sand. Like that was my introduction to football. So, mm-hmm. um, as any kid could imagine, if you was watching those guys play, <clears throat> just how exciting those games were. So, I begged my mom to play ball for a couple of years. She finally let me play when I was nine. Uh, mm-hmm. I, missed, I missed like the like the what do you call it, like registration and all of that? Right, right. I missed all of that. She let me, she said yes, finally, I don't know, maybe like the week before the first game. <clears throat> so I missed the practice and everything, and then I showed up to the first game. Um, my mom knew somebody who kind of was, uh, not the chairman, but my mom worked in for the newspaper in Indianapolis for a long, for a while. So she knew um, a guy who ran the, the Pop Warner League. So. He got me in, and the team I played for didn't have a quarterback. Well, I don't know if they had one or not, but I showed up. He was like, you want to play quarterback? Because I was the first one there. I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you throw. So that's how it started. We played catch. He was like, all right, bet you the quarterback you can throw. Yeah. That's, that's literally how it started. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I started. But uh, unfortunately, not too many kids can catch at that early of an age. So um, every player was like quarterback sneak, and I would just – that was my first play of football ever in an organized game. My first anything, my first anything involved in organized football was a game. And the very first play was a quarterback sneak. Uh, I ran about 85 yards and scored. And I think that was the set the tone for I'm like, I think I really like this. And then I was hooping too, because I was pretty good in basketball. I've been playing mm-hmm. hooping since I was three. So uh and baseball as long as well. So I was just good in all of them. And then as I got to college, I mean, high school, I kind of, that's when I kind of started to develop a serious true life. Now, I, I, football is what I want to do for right. for life. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really want to play in B. So um, I right. got to high school, and that's where, that's where it took off, just how, uh, taking it more serious. And that, that's, that's hilarious. To, of course, start with, with basketball. Like Indiana is known as a big basketball state. Even people down here in Canada know that it's a big basketball state. And, you know, you wanted to excel in football as well. And you brought the Bowman High School basketball team to the state championship, winning the, the Class 2A championship as well in 2013. And, of course, um, I know you have this acronym saying, pray until something happens, right? Pray until something happens. But playing basketball and, you know, doing very well there, do you you had offers going to like D one school to play basketball as well, but you opted to go to, to Tiffany University, and you think that was uh, how, how was that decision process for yourself? Um, I, I had a, like a couple walk on offers for D one. I had um more more like D two offers for hoop, and then I had I actually had a lot of D one offers in baseball. Um, okay, but baseball just wasn't something that I did. I didn't want to do. Long term, even though I mean, sport, that's the sport that pays the most. Between. Pays the money, yeah. Kyler, yeah. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't something that I wanted to do long term. I enjoy it. I still have a love for baseball. But um, when when football, obviously, with being in Indiana and having success in high school and, and basketball, 
mm-hmm. it brought colleges about. So when they, when they would come recruit me to play basketball for them, I would just tell everybody, like, I'm a football player. Mm-hmm. Uh, rest in peace, okay. my athletic director and basketball coach. But back then, we were on the same page with letting every recruiter know that I wanted to be a football player. Right. Um, right. And then Tiffin came, and I told him the same thing, but the basketball coach, like, wanted me bad enough that he reached out to the football coach and was like, hey, we want him bad enough. Like, you guys got any scholarship money? Right. And he was like, yeah, we got a little left over. Let me pull up some film. He looked at my film and was like, how can we get him in on a dual scholarship? So that's how that turned out. Ended wow. up having a dual scholarship to play both sports. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a blessing. Uh, and it was a blessing in, in going yeah. into the tip, honestly. Definitely. And I see you, you're always giving like on Twitter, you're giving love to Tiffin everything. Of course, in the in vision there, you know, Tiffin just kind of, uh, you know, taking over right now and is doing a lot when it comes to the football program and different programs as well, too. Um, but I wanted to ask you, too, because you did play baseball. And a lot of quarterbacks did play baseball. I played uh, you know, quarterback in high school, just had a, an arm and was able to throw and, and play basketball as well, too. But do you feel that baseball helps a lot of these quarterbacks kind of develop their throwing motion in the sense or is it something that you just naturally had even before baseball like your arm strength uh i think that was natural uh, right. i think i was just a gift from god honestly um right. cause i don't i didn't have a my dad was like sporadic in my life growing up and then he just completely took off but so it's not like i had somebody to teach me how to throw the ball like my mom like i said my mom wasn't an athlete, you know, what I'm saying? Like my mom didn't take me outside and hoop with me. She just bought right. me all the stuff I asked for. So, like, for me, sports was like something that I just I yes, wanted for myself. Like, I didn't have a mm-hmm. a parent push me in that mm-hmm. direction. So, like, I didn't have somebody teach me how to throw the bar or anything like that. So, for me, um, I don't know about other others, but for me, it was, that was just a God given ability. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And you're you know, playing at Tiffany, becoming the the the, the top you know, quarterback in the state and in, in the time, even going into high school, playing at Tiffin and doing, you know, having the success you had, getting invited to the senior bowl. Um, like, how was that experience as well, too? Like, is there a lot of scouts kind of coming to talk to you? Was it coming, like, how was that? In, like, CFL scouts, I know CFL is always there as well. You have a number of conversations with people from the CFL. And, like, how, how was that experience, as a, you know, as a whole with the senior bowl? Uh, greatest experience for me, um, in, right. in my, not greatest experience for me in my football career, but – one of the best experiences I had by far in my football career. Um, for me, I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, you get there, you know, obviously I'm one of two or three Division two guys that year, mm-hmm. third Division two quarterback ever in the Senior Bowl. So for me, it was like you're around the guys who play on Saturday, at, on TV on Saturday every single weekend. You're around the guys that get all the notoriety, even if they have a bad game. Right. You were around the guys who's getting all the publicity. So mm-hmm. when when you communicate, like you had guys there, it's like, oh man, it's the it's the worst. Like I don't wanna and then even mm-hmm. for me it was just like keeping my mindset of like don't don't cling into that behavior. Um, mm-hmm. don't lose my mindset and hunger. because um, I you know, like maybe that's something they used to. I wasn't used to talking to every NFL team every day for a week straight. Right. So, um, right. for me it was a it was an incredible experience. I still appreciate it to this day, and I never take I never take it back. Never take it back, and and being playing in the Great Midwest uh, in Division Two there, like there's some dogs, of course, playing there as well too, right? And you you showed out, and pretty much could, should have been a, a D1 quarterback, and showing out, and now being a pro a pro quarterback yourself. But coach uh, Coach Reiser, how how was his influence on you? Like, do you have a, a pretty good influence with Coach Reiser as you were at? Tiffany University, like how were your coaches? How was the influence and the, pretty much the brotherhood you had in that in that school as well? So when I attended Tiffin, uh, we didn't play in the Great Midwest. We played in the GLIAC, which was right. top top two toughest conferences in Division Two, with right. uh, Fair State, Grand Valley State, Ashland. Like every week, you playing against NFL guys. You know, and mm-hmm. if you go back to the years I played. You right. got second round draft picks against every team every week, second, third, fourth round draft picks. The guys who sustained in the league as well. Mm-hmm. And um I got a relationship with Chris now, with Coach Reicher now. Um, but he wasn't my coach in college. My coach was right. Coach Gary Goff, who is now at Valdos State. Um and we had an incredible relationship from day one, coming in, him giving me the opportunity to go win the job, mm-hmm. um, and then sticking with me. Uh, 
to help coach me, help coach me up, help learn. And my quarterback coach, who I owe a ton of credit to, who taught me the grind, <clears throat> the grind of becoming successful at the quarterback position coach, Adam Riggerbauer, who's OC and quarterback coach at Slippery Rock now. Um, it, it was just phenomenal. Like, the way we worked together, the way we, we studied, the way our, our relationship there was – uh, phenomenal. And unfortunately, you don't get a lot of coaches in your lifetime that that um, love you like that, right. especially in a professional football. You know, you, you're earning the check, so you got to do a lot of things on your own. Mm-hmm. You got to go go make your money. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll never change that experience for anything. And that's amazing, man. And and you've been going from there now. Uh, you got to, you know, first in, in Arizona, got to play like in, in Arizona. But you, you said something. It kind of struck me, um, you know, we're reading back and doing the research. And he's like, hey, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And after, you no, know, I can always see things happening. So you got to be, as a quarterback, you've got to be ready for anything, whether you're on a team, whether you're, uh, you know, you're, you're being told that you're probably, you know, you're not there at a certain moment. Like the adversity that you face, um, you know, at being a pro, like, does anything surprise you anymore? No, 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 not now. Early in my career, yeah, I was surprised by a lot of, things that happen in a, in a professional uh, football world. But mm-hmm. at this point, no, I, I don't know what it would take to surprise me, but no, nah, not much surprises me now. Right. Okay. So you're going from there, you know, then, you know, you're, you're in Arizona, but how was the transition now to, you know, you're getting called up from a CFL team. Were you just willing to, like, did you, did you ever have coming, coming to Canada as a possibility in your mind? Or is that something that you, you ever, you know, kind of process in the sense like or you know, how how was that transition all for you uh the transition was fun for me but I mean obviously like every other college football player that had an opportunity to play in the NFL the CFL wasn't an option you know it's it's NFL um and then after I got released from Arizona I just kind of sitting at home for a week and a half getting impatient with um talking to other teams and they're like oh we're going to bring you up and then that day get pushed back or whatever. And um, then hearing from a CFL team who at our time was Cavis Reed, our GM, Cavis who Reed. was expressing a ton of interest. And he's like, man, like, let's go, let's go for it. I told my agent, like, let's go for it. And um, that's when I, that was my introduction to the CFL. And when I got there, it was just like, this ain't a slouch league. Like, mm-hmm. majority Dogs. of these players, come from the NFL. Right. So, like, you right. don't – I don't care if you played in the NFL four or five years and then go to the CFL. Like, you're going to find some guys who played four or five years and it, it doesn't matter. Like, you coming up there with some NFL background, mm-hmm. you can watch it because most of the guys do. So, mm-hmm. when I accepted that right away, I'm like, man, it's not a slouch league. Like, you got to – it's pro football and you get exposed quick. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, of course, you did, you know, kind of start with BC Lions and you kind of came down to, you know, Bluecrafts to, to Montreal. And being in Montreal, you're one of the one of the first quarterbacks that won a back-to-back game, right, as a starting quarterback. I remember that time watching to be like, oh, man, his arm is strong. You're accurate as well, too, right? But being in with the Montreal Alouettes there um, among the, the, you know, the entire publicity that came with being with Johnny Menzel, do you just kind of look at it as like, hey, I'm here. I'm going to play. I don't care who's in front of me. Like, I'm just going to do, do my best to kind of just stay like stay. But how was that mental, um, you know, challenge throughout that entire process there? In yeah. Uh, I don't know. Other people might um, catch that, uh, that aura of Johnny Manziel a different way, but I met Johnny years prior to him being in Montreal with him. Right. Uh, we trained together in San Diego with George Whitfield. Oh, wow. So okay, like, there we go. Yeah, yeah. so, like, the uh, the wow factor, anything like that, to be around the Heisman Trophy or anything like that, like that, for me, he was like a regular dude from the from the jump, way, even way back when I met him. So, mm. uh, I mean, probably originally, I'm like, damn, this is this Johnny Manziel. Like, this is 2000. 2017? Oh, 14, 13. My first month, like, right after he wins the Heisman. So, right. this is, like, originally – I probably got some wild factor in there. Like, who wouldn't? Like, this is the Heisman Trophy one. And I'm coming from Division Two. so. But but once we got to Montreal together, it was, like, regular. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had had no ill – I have no ill feelings for him. I have no ill feelings for any quarterback that I've been in the room with. You know what I mean? Whether 
we played a split time or I was a starter or even um, last – or not last year, but the year before getting hurt and then Vern playing well and, and doing his thing. I, I have no ill feelings, man. Like, what God got for me is for me. So, um, mm -hmm. with Johnny, it was like, man, go out there, do your thing. And when I get my opportunity, I'm going to do my thing. And they rock. when he went down, I did my thing. Um, obviously, with Montreal, you got to ride the hot hand when you're playing in a franchise that's trying to get used to winning games. Absolutely. Um, and that's all I was trying to do is continue to keep the, keep, keep the, keep the spirit going, keep the morale up, uh, continue to be a leader and win games. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters, winning games. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember seeing you back then. And like, that's, this guy's young. This guy's young in there. You know, doing, you're still young. Uh, doing what you're doing back then and uh, in, in the pros against these guys, as you said, like these are some dogs, like some of these guys are pro players as well. Right. But um, you're, you're trying like coming down from, 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 from Indiana, right. Being, being in Tipping university and going to the CFL. How, how do you adjust to the, have, by the way, have you been in Toronto? Have you been around Toronto recently? Have you been in, well, probably not recently, but have you, have you got a feel of Toronto at all? Yeah, I've been in Toronto a couple of times. A couple of times. So you kind of, they kind of know exactly how it is. Perfect. So, your your take about just being in Canada itself, like you find that the people are definitely different than back home. Like, how was your entire take with just people in in Canada as well, especially CFL fans? Uh, when I first got to the CFL, um, yeah, you also got to remember, like my first CFL is in Montreal and Quebec, where French is the Quebec. first language. So, yeah, yeah, I didn't even, if I'll be honest, I didn't know that. I didn't know where I was going. Yes. I just, <laughs> I'm just like, you know, a plane ticket somewhere to play football. Yeah. I'll figure it out. So <laughs> I get off. I'm seeing everything in French. People talking to me. I'm, I'm asking, like, a question. Yeah, go ahead. I'm getting, yeah. like, side-eye. I try to pay for something <laughs> with a, a couple of American dollars. Like, you know, every, everything true. was, yeah, for me, yeah. For, it was, it was all shot. different. So mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I found out after – I think I got there on like a Wednesday and the first game was two days later on a Friday, mm -hmm. a night game in Montreal. And I walked into the stadium and I'm like, oh, this is fire. Like, this ain't no yeah. slouch. Like, this is yeah. this the real deal. Fans out here, they loving you. Um, couple fans, you know, I don't know how, because I'm not a super duper known person, like, especially in the right. CFL. I just got up here. Yeah, like, yeah. Nobody knows yeah. me. A couple yeah. people know you. Um, and then you realize, like, oh, there's some serious diehard CFL fans. And then once you get the opportunity to play, you get exposed to it more and more. Like, oh, man, the CFL fan base is serious. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. love football. So you better yeah. come with it. 100%. And yeah, that's something that you, know, you, you actually have to, you know, adjust to and of course you play with Vernans, you play around with a number of these talented players in hand up Wamba and of course other players that are really talented Knock. as well. Knock, Knock. right? From Miss Saga as well, Ray am. But um I want to talk about mental health because even you know I, I always kind of compare it to my, myself and kind of being into it because especially as a quarterback, playing quarterback just in a number of different ways, high school, secondary, whatever it may be, you tweet out mental health is very serious and I personally have struggled with mine during times of my life. Serious question, is there an old line or anything to start preparing for your mental toughness? I, I want to ask you, as a quarterback, having that, you know, short memory, is this something that you develop at a young age, like just being able to, you know, not have not have a, you know, long, a, you have to have a, a short-term memory? Like, how, how was that internalizing, you know, that memory to be like, hey, if, some, if a bad play happens, you got to move on. Like, you're a pro for a reason. Like, how, how would that, how do you deal with a number of um, mental, um, you know, turmoil in a sense as a quarterback? Yeah, um, I think it's just something you develop with, A, probably who your coach is and how how hard are they coaching you, um, how are they developing you, how are they helping you when you do deal with some some um, bad bad games, a bad half, a bad pass, right. anything like that. Like, are you dealing with a cupcake coach who's, who you might be the best player on the team and he just, hey, man, man, and he's going to bandage everything up? Or are you dealing with a coach who – is a hard ass who's going to pound you every mistake you make that mm -hmm. that may limit your confidence level. And that at the quarterback yeah. position, um, confidence is huge. Uh, just having, having the confidence to, to go out there and understand, like, I know what I'm doing and I'm going to play to my ability. That's half the battle at our position. 
Um, and then from there, it's just like, uh, for me at least, how I was raised, like, uh, my family, like, right. I got all older cousins. Mm -hmm. um, for a long time, I was the baby. So mm -hmm. going out there hooping, because it was basketball, go out there hooping. Right. Like, you're not allowed to just because you five years younger. Yeah. I'm not about to just let you shoot this layup. Yeah. I'm not, you know what I'm like, <laughs> now you're to pin that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure, so, for sure, so, yeah. Like, so that's kind of where it's still, for me, at least that's where I got a lot of my toughness from. Like, I got a job to do. I got to get it done. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. growing past that, I always played a year ahead. Um, so, so that was another thing. Like, it don't matter if I'm a year. Okay, cool. I got to dominate anyway. Um, and then mm -hmm. and my faith. Um, Absolutely. My mom's drilled it in me early, understanding who you are, who you are, and whose you are. Uh, if you understand that, to me, it's, it's nothing that could go against you. Because it could be, it could be anything. The Bible says that the, the, mm -hmm. he'll make the devil your footstool, your enemy your footstool. So I can't, I can't, I'm not gonna stress on any of that negativity, anything like that. Like. If I make a mistake nine times out of ten, you know you made the mistake. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. keep moving. That's perfect. And I know you probably preach preach that in uh, your push football skills camp as well. Is that is that held in? Is that held in Bowman Academy? You held it with the, like how how do you? Is it in Gary, Indiana? Like exactly where are you where are you basing that right now? And how's that been going? Uh, that's a little bit everywhere, man. I'm traveling. Yeah. Mm -hmm, traveling mm -hmm. to the kids that want to work. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Most of mm -hmm. it's here where I'm living now. I'm in Michigan City. Um, a lot of kids come out this way from all these cities around here. Um, and then if we get a bunch of kids in one area, I'll go to them. Um, and then traveling to some high schools and talking and stuff like that. But, yeah, mainly in Michigan City, Indiana. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm getting everywhere, especially in the G. I got I to gotta feed that knowledge. 100%. And, you know, you're doing it with Eric Griffin, the BPA as well. But the, the skills and what you, where you preach there is a more – you know, is it more of just motivating the student, motivating the kids you guys have to, you know, just do the best? Is it every position as well, or do you focus on, like, particular school groups? No, nah, every position. Right. Okay. Every position. Every position. Okay. Definitely motivating, um, but then understanding that it's a standard. Like, we're, not, we're not out here just to kick rocks around or go through the motions. Like, it's a standard, and you got to live up to that standard. Because mm -hmm. it's going to correlate in life. So. Absolutely. Yeah, so we got to put we put a standard on things, and then we work to at, at the minimum we had the standard. You're born in '95, but the way you talk, the way you kind of carry yourself, I'm like this guy's, you know, well above well above, above his years, of course, well 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 um more mature, of course. But I was gonna say, um, during this pandemic, during the uncertainty that the CFO has kind of uh, laid on all of its players and franchises and whatnot, how have you been handling this pandemic, and exactly how have you uh, how have you adjusted? Right? Are you are you not the kind of waiting for the CFO to say, okay, this is the time we're going to be playing. Like, of course, I know they came up with a tentative date, but is your mindset just on perfecting everything that you can in your own your own life? Yeah, for me, um, gave me one, it gave me an opportunity to heal from the injury, um, which I was awkward enough. I don't know why the pandemic and stuff happened or why I've never been hurt in my career. So this is the first time I've been time. hurt for real. So it gave me an opportunity to heal from the, from the injury. Mm -hmm. um, to where now I could be fully, fully um, recovered and fully healthy. And then furthermore, I came from a D2. Um, I came from a school, first high school, first graduating class 2010. I didn't go to the powerhouses and things like that. Like, right. I, I'm used to getting it out the mud. So What's that? for me, yeah. the, the pandemic and our start day, like, I never stopped. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I figured out when the rest, obviously I'm a pro now, I got to take care of my body, but like, I never turned my grind off just because our season got canceled. I never right. shut it down because we didn't have a start date. Mm -hmm. Wise man once told me, success comes when opportunity meets preparation. So if you're not prepared, when your opportunity comes, it's a wrap anyway. So I'd rather stay wow. ready, get ready. 100%. There you go. That, that's something I want to kind of leave you off with. But, hey, really excited to see you in Toronto, playing, competing uh, in Toronto as well, too. We're really excited to have you down here. Um, hopefully when you're down here, when everything kind of clears up, we can bring you in the studio and kind of have a, have a kind of follow up to this. But hey, man, really appreciate it. I want to you know, hope you 
you and your, you know, congratulations to you and your, your wife right now as well, too. And it's been, it's been, it's been great, man. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. All right, man. This is the first and 10 podcast brought to you by OXV Media. Keep balling. God bless.